Rocco Despirito here, host of Downtown Alliance's Dine Around Downtown, Cooking at Home Edition. The Alliance is the business improvement district for Lower Manhattan, whose mission it is to help make downtown a cleaner, safer, and more vibrant place to work, live, and visit. After hosting 23 virtual episodes, we are creating a new program where I will now join the chef in their restaurant to create a new cooking experience for you. So come with me now into multiple Emmy and James Beard award-winning Chef Marcus Samuelson's newest restaurant, Metropolis. Chef, what's up? How are you? Oh, so nice to see you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. We're cooking together yeah. after a long, long time. Yeah. How fun. I want you to meet it. Hey, new... Chef. How are you? How are you? Nice Pleasure. to meet you. Ed Tinoco. Nice yeah. to meet you. So, I'm, we got to start here. <laughs> you got to start I'm where? Here. Uh, I'm a little afraid. I'm so excited that you guys meet. Yeah. Because Rocco changed food in America. Oh, boy. Wow. Now we're starting there. Rocco yeah. changed food in America. Thank we you, came man. up at the Very same nice. time, and at every event, it was Rocco and me. And so we, many events, right? So many so events. Many events. And we were together. He pushed me and he taught me about sea urchin. He What's taught he me about. No, 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 let's just cut it out, dude. Yeah. I didn't teach you about anything. And Rocco, I'm going to tell you one thing. The guy that reminds me most of you, a young Rocco Espirito, is Ed. Ed, <laughs> Chef Ed Tinoco. All right. Equally cool. talented. Yeah. Queens. Yeah. Also teaching me and pushing me. It's so a... I feel like it's a deja vu. You know what I mean? Very cool. It's That's the, it. That's all, like, all I got. Greeting. Thank you. That's so nice of you. No, it's yes, great. for sure. What are we making? What are we making? Uh, you know, we wanted to bring you back to Sweden, right? Because okay, okay. Metropolis yeah. is all about New York City. Right. And this is probably like the closest Swedish reference we have on the okay. dish. Okay. It's actually one of the first dishes said Chef Ed said. You know what? I'm gonna pay homage to chef. Yeah. I'm gonna make a Swedish dish. And I'm like, okay. all right, cool. That's nice of you. No, it's, it's super nice. And uh, so it, it must be hard for you not to go to Sweden all the time for dish ideas, right? Yeah. The, the yeah. culture is so rich. The food is so great. Yeah. But you know what? New York is better. <laughs> New York is better. It's and you did that already. Yeah. You did that. Already. Uh, yeah. A long time ago. So you know, what's cool about Metropolis is that, you know, this room, this place. You know, this building really means a lot for New Yorkers, right? Think about where we are, right? Where yeah. World Trade Center happened. Mm -hmm. Such a That's right. horrible, horrible event to the world, not just New Yorkers. And Bloomberg and Ron Perlman had this vision, said the memorial has to be built, the museum has to be built. Mm -hmm. The next building is going to be all about culture. Mm. And we are so lucky to be here, really to honor it mm -hmm. and set a restaurant together with the stage. You know, when you walk around and think about that, we yeah. get a matchup with amazing food. So I called a dear friend of mine, Gavin Casey. I'm like, yo, who's the best young chef in the country? Gavin's like, this is one guy in Chicago, but you're never going to get him. And then we call my other boy in Florida. It's like, yeah. oh, this is one guy in Chicago, but yeah. you're never going to get him. Okay. And then I called okay. James Kent. It's like, yo, there's one guy in Chicago, Whoa. three different chefs. Whoa. I thought, okay. I'm just gonna, give me his name, I'm just gonna hit him up on Instagram. Amazing. Hit him Cover up on years. Instagram. Cover years. <laughs> and, and, and that's how I met Ed, you know? And, wow. You know, that's how we met. Well, that's, I mean, that's an incredible yeah. you know, endorsement. Three different chefs. I've never met before. Yeah. I have not been in the same room, but yeah. obviously, that was a great connection. Yeah. yeah. And I already thought about coming back home too. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of just cool. worked out for both of us. Your family must be so happy too, right? Yeah. yeah. They have you yeah. back, yeah. I love char. Uh, the nice fattiness, you know, similar to a salmon or almost a Tasmanian trout, you know, just like that fattiness on it. We're gonna we're gonna season it pretty hard, just from up top. So when you season, you want to go high, right? When they go high, we go higher, right? That's what they said, right? Yeah. So we do that, and I'm just gonna mess it up. And Ed's gonna be so mad at me today because I'm gonna mess it up. He's gonna be like, "Don't do it, chef." You can't I mess it up. You're you know? Marcus. Come so, on. so. Um, you know, the Swedish flavors, and those Nordic flavors with yeah. fennel, cucumber. So we're gonna go pretty rustic, just like okay. just like break down the fennel a little bit. Yeah. And just, just gonna take a little bit of that edge out. You good know what? It's time for fennel right now, by the way. It is. Fennel's tasting so good right now. And I also noticed you got the Mac Daddy plancha. How Mr. nice is that? How nice is <laughs> you know, that? When you sear something, you want that high heat. When you sear something at home, it's hard to get that heat. We often work with cast iron pants and stuff like that. Understanding heat, I think probably is one of those things that chefs don't talk about that yeah. much, but it's, we have such an advantage for that. So don't sure. be afraid of the heat, you know? Yeah. And these pans, you know, these pans are not expensive, by the way. They're, no. you know, 
they're not the cheapest fans in the world, but they'll last forever. Your grandchildren will be using them, and they uh, they transfer heat really well. Just simple okay. cucumber. Cucumber. And we're just going to add some citrus to it. Just, it. just very simple. Uh, just a combination of citrus, cucumber, mm -hmm. salt, right? Mm -hmm. And then just layering that. And that's another thing that chefs do more than the home cook. We're layering our flavors, right? I have fennel there roasted. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we're shaving some fennel, right? But because however you cook, we think about the same thing. Sweet, salt, sour, bitter, and umami, right? One more time. Sweet, sweet, <laughs> salt, sour, bitter, and umami. That's it. And then how do we develop those flavors? We develop them through aesthetic, if it doesn't look right, texture, right? This is all about texture. And of course, fragrance. So those are the things that we think about as chefs. And at home, cook, we just cook. But when I tell my wife, it's like, oh, great texture. She's like, can you just eat it? Yeah. Can you just eat it? Home cooks are also following a recipe. You know, they're not cooking necessarily from their imagination, from their heart, from their soul. And I just wish people at home would do that a little more often. Yeah. Just, just grab a pan, grab some ingredients, throw it in there, see what happens. Yeah. You know? I love that. So we're gonna make a classic French sauce, a beurre blanc. Yes, it sounds very Frenchy, but it's a, one of these mother sauces that, if you can make a Hollandaise, if you can make a beurre blanc. It's kind of the foundation of cooking. What is the beurre blanc? We start very often with vinegar, shallots. We have a little garlic shallot. And we're adding soy into our beurre blanc. Not such a French thing, but just to get fermentation and flavors in there to make it easier. But we're adding a little bit of cream into this. Old school, you just go butter in and whisk, whisk, whisk. But this is a home trick that anyone can do. So think about the soy, forget the soy, think about it as red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. And now we slow it down. And here's really where the, the burr comes in in the beurre blanc, right? We just, we just, smoke, just add that in. This sauce is never boiling again, never. If it boils, it breaks. That's it. We're just gonna whisk that guy in. It's gonna hang out. Now we can balance it with as much acid as we want. Now our acid is, and look at these lemons. I'm using leftover lemon, right? Rocco told me, you better be green, Marcus. You better recycle. And you know, I said, yes, chef, that's it, right? And that's it, that's actually the sauce. Yes, those lumps are in here, but it's hot in this kitchen. So I can just let them kind of hang out there. Now it's time for me to turn the fennel. Don't worry, it should be a little brown here, right? Look at that. The sugar, it's gonna be gorgeous. Who doesn't like fennel? Just a little bit. Look at that, that's gonna hang out. Just again, I talked about layering these flavors, right? Cucumber, right now it's a little mint. And we're just gonna toss it. That's it, that's it. Olive oil, chef? Right here? Yeah, right? So this almost has that Greekish kind of vibe to it, right? Now for like the finishing dish, we're gonna go closest dish out. I want high heat, and I, I want two things in my pan when I sear fish. Start with oil, then I add in cold butter. They do two very different things, right? The oil is here to take the heat off, and the butter is really here to add flavors, right? Again, this is just fennel front, and I'm just gonna do it out. Boom. And we're gonna cook this beautiful fish 90%, 80% on one side. And I think that that's kind of how it's gonna respond the best for this. And think about it like when you buy fish, I learned this from the Japanese guys. You want sushi quality of fish, grade A. Sushi quality of fish, grade A. You can tell a little sweet lie. You're gonna tell, every time you buy fish, tell them you're gonna make sushi. Whether you make sushi or not, it don't matter. For sure, yeah, always get the best, best fish you can get, for sure. And the other thing I always tell people, you're paying for the bones, tell them to go and get the bones. Because as you're cooking that fish, you can put a pot on, you can wash them, you can put some water in there, bring it to your bowl, some carrots, some onion, and maybe even a tablespoon of miso. And guess what? You got fish stock. Then freeze that in small portions. When you, one night when you want to come home and you want to cook quick uh, lunch or dinner for somebody, add ramen in. Bring it to your bowl, fresh vegetable, you yep, got the best yep. meal in town.
Chef Rocco knows. We always built a dish here, right? This is kind of our garnish. And this di dish obviously is built on acid and freshness, but the texture of the cucumber and the fennel is really the star here. And that's gonna work against the salted, the more roasted, the more, you know, gives me kind of, they're not potatoes, but kind of gives me that rusty yeah, vibe. Yeah, for sure. And everyone was saying, oh, it's burning, it's not burning. We're gonna cook this, we're gonna maybe bring it down a little bit, but we want that, you know? And I'm gonna add a little bit more fennel to that and then flip them. And Arctic char has so much fat in it, you oh. want a little bit of caramelization on the outside. I love Arctic char, because first of all, it's plenty, uh, it's readily available. Yep. It's not so expensive anymore. So he's like, <laughs> oh, look at that nice. guy. Wow, look at that, Marcus. Whoa. That's literally picture perfect. And then, you guys, How this- How much nicer could it be? This you can tell Danielle or JG. Yeah. Because they taught me this. The they taught us thing. all this. This is beautiful. Notice how it's not overcooked, it's not undercooked, oh. it's just perfect. Plating, yeah. right? Every chef has their own idea and identity how they want to plate. For me, I love to think about it from threes and fives and seven. Negative positive space on the plate. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm leaving probably a third open. Okay. Just right. like that, all open. Right. And this beautiful fennel. Cucumber salad that we have here. Mm -hmm. Dredge, you're just gonna play with this a little bit, just so it can bleed out just a bit. But you wanna control mm -hmm. the plate. Look at what a good chef does, by I the do. way. You see how he's supplying you Everything. with the next step, and he's already moved it from the towel to the paper. I, this is this is training, my friends. No, he, this is superb training. Yep, no, Chef Ed, there's not. Uh, he knows every aspect of the kitchen, I'll tell you that. And it's so nice that for a young chef to be have know, so much depth. I know, I know. You know, which is so rare to see. So now with the sauce, this moment here, oh, right? Look at the sauce. Oh my so then God. just gotta get a close-up of the sauce. Look at the and creaminess. We're just gonna go a little bit. Wow. Just like that. Shiny, creamy. Not too much. Mm -hmm. Not too much. Right? One place beside those, mm -hmm. those little pieces. We kept the shallow pieces yeah. in there. Just too much. And let's it just it's gonna live. And then mm -hmm. just because we can. If you have the right texture on the sauce, mm -hmm. you can do one more thing, just like a little bit like that. Oh, but there we go. Cool. That's nice. it. Just to create a little bit. I love I'm it. here. I love it. Where's the paintbrush, guys? I don't see <laughs> <it>. <laughs> oh, I'm not could. even joking. I need to learn how to do that before uh, I leave. It's a love letter to New York City where we're really inspired by the city. It's delicious. It's elegant and it's fun and has a great vibe. Ed is an amazing chef, an amazing talent that has been truly such a privilege to work with and sometimes guide and sometimes learn something from. Uh, we go back and forth and we push and, and we push each other, which has been fun. Oh, I don't decide, my kids decide. I have no, I have no voting right in my own house. <laughs> uh, I would say first, I would say uh, just the fact that I've been in business for 30 years in New York City, uh, having so many New Yorkers come through and be opinionated and stay in business, which is very difficult. That for me, it's the hardest mountain to climb, so I know like, wow, so I have a lot of appreciation and love and a lot of respect there. You know, the coolest thing was probably when Madonna took over Red Rooster and did like a whole eight songs or whatever, that's probably the coolest experience, I would say. Now, now hands, hands. Wow. CCAP is a program that was started by Richard Grousman over 30 years ago, career through culinary arts. We teach really life skills through culinary and we start in high school, uh, sophomore year in high school start and then all the way to junior and senior. And then we create competitions and then essentially scholarships, right? This is the big thing is that scholarship provides scholarship. So these amazing young Young up and coming chefs can learn life skills through hospitality. And we, today we have the CCAP grads that are master psalms. They run businesses, of course they run restaurants. Or they're in other lives, not just restaurant life, 
but they learn those skills through CCAP. It's an amazing organization in 10 states. Um, it's, it's a really important organization that I'm really proud to be part of. The very first chef that sent me away, he sent me to Switzerland, saw something in me. However, he saw something in me that I didn't see myself. That was game changing for me. And I, or the chef I had in Switzerland. Uh, but then I would also say someone like Charlie Trotter in the mid 90s that gave me a leg up and say, hey, you can come and train with us in Chicago. Uh, showed me fresh wasabi, showed me Buddha fruit, saw me. Showed me so many different things that I didn't have a clue about. And then I would say Miss Leah Chase that just passed away a couple of years ago that really transformed how we allowed to eat. She broke law, so black and white and everybody can eat together. She didn't care about the law. She's like, everybody can come to my dining room. So those are real game changers and opened up doors for me on, on different levels. For me to decide that you both respect the food and the product and the seasons, and then the desire that you want to learn and cu you're curious, you know. I'm just as curious in food and about the people or the craft people around food that I was, that I started. So the curiosity drives me forward. That makes me get up in the morning. Be curious, dive in. I mean, the project as a whole is important for the city and I just feel privileged to be part of it. It's really a humbling, it's a lot of work, but it's also humbling to be part of something greater than yourself. This is PAC, Program Performing Arts Center is important for the city. And, and we do one part of it, which is the hospitality part. So it uh, brings me so much joy and also a lot of respect, you know, um, to be part of this. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to post your plate. It's always a fun element of the Downtown Alliance program. Don't forget to tag Marcus, me, Downtown Alliance, and of course, Metropolis. Bragging rights, what else is there? <laughs> Join us for our next episode this summer. Be sure to register for early access. Can we eat? Yeah, well, I think we That's can good. eat. It's your place. <laughs> your place, you decide the rules. Yeah. This is Arctic char. Yeah. Guys, if you're thinking about messing around with fish, Arctic char yes. is the perfect. It's a great starter fish, I think, too. Yeah. So nice, it's right? too good though. Good. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's clean. Oh my god. It's clean. Uh -huh. Right? Wow. No wonder you get all those stars. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs>